So much for that soft landing. According to the Federal Reserve's key measure of GDP growth, the United States economy is about to slip into a recession. What's up, guys? I'm Nobody Special, and a couple of days ago, the Atlanta Fed released an update to their GDP Now tracker, which is a mathematical model for economic growth, and it saw two big revisions downward in a row, both at the end of June and on July 1st. And now, as we stand, we are looking at negative 2.1% economic growth just a few weeks ahead of that July 28th read on GDP for the second quarter. And with that, we are going to shrink my big melon of a head and let's get into this story. This is on CNBC, dated July 1st. Atlanta Fed GDP tracker shows the U.S. economy is likely in a recession. The Atlanta Fed's GDP now gauge sees the second quarter running at negative 2.1%. Coupled with the first quarter's decline of 1.6%, that would fit the technical definition of a recession. Now, there's a couple of points I want to emphasize from this article. GDP now has a strong track record, and the closer we get to July 28th release of the initial Q2 GDP estimate, the more accurate it becomes, wrote Nicholas Colas, co-founder of Data Trek Research. The tracker took a fairly precipitous fall from its last estimate of 0.3% growth on June 27th. Data this week showing further weakness in consumer spending and inflation-adjusted domestic investment prompted that cut that put the April through June period into negative territory. And looking here, this is the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta's GDP Now website. I'm going to put links down in the description below so you guys can see this data for yourself. But here is what they're talking about. And this is the latest release from July 1st. And this brown line here, this is the Atlanta Fed's GDP Now estimate. And you can see it's been trending down steadily since a high in mid-May. And then all of a sudden, wham, at the end of June, this thing has taken a nosedive deep into negative territory. And remember, the closer we get to that June 28th GDP reading, the more accurate this indicator gets. Now, I also want to emphasize that this is not some analyst's opinion this is not some guy weighing in or any kind of estimate. This is a mathematical model. It's constantly evolving. It takes data that's released on a regular basis from all these government agencies and organizations, and it compiles it into this complex mathematical formula and spits out this number. So I just want to emphasize, this is a mathematical model, not some guy's opinion, and this has a very good track record. Actually, if you take out the few months surrounding the pandemic, this thing is incredibly accurate. And there's only a couple of data releases left between now and the 28th release of GDP. And this is looking at the report itself that was just released on July 1st. Again, link down in the description below. You can see that chart that we just showed a few minutes ago. But on page three here, you can see the actual history of the GDP Now tracker and what its value has been. You can see we started on April 29th with a 1.9% positive number. And that number has swung quite a bit. It hit a peak of 2.5% positive growth on May 17th when the retail trade and industrial production numbers came out and ever since then it's been trending down and you can see here on June 28th it was at 0.7 percent positive and then we had two consecutive downward revisions on June 30th and July 1st. June 30th we dropped from 0.7 all the way down to negative 1.0 and then on July 1st we dropped all the way down to negative 2.1 the lowest it's been since this data started getting released on April 29th. Again, there are only five more data points between now and the 28th. And again, as time goes on, this mathematical model gets more and more accurate. And the big drop down, this big drop to negative 2.1, it came from the ISM Manufacturing Index. And here we see on July 1st from MarketWatch, this is manufacturing grew at slowest pace in two years, ISM finds, and another sign of economy slowing. This was the data point that feeds into that mathematical model of GDP now that caused this big downward revision. And the ISM manufacturing index fell to 53% from a previous reading of 56.1%. Now, it's important to note any reading above 50% in the ISM index is technically growth. But we went from high growth, 56.1, to a much lower growth of 53%. And when you feed that into that mathematical model, it brought the whole indicator down substantially. The Institute for Supply Management's barometer of America's factories fell to a two-year low of 53% in June. The ISM index dropped 3.1 points from 56.1 in May. The report cited high inflation as a big problem, but noted that price pressures eased for the third month in a row. While any number above 50% signifies growth, the June reading was the weakest since June of 2020. You may recall June of 2020 was a rather doo-doo of a month. Let's not relive that year, shall we? The economist poll by the Wall Street Journal had forecast the index of 54.3, so a big downward surprise. 
And here you can see that ISM index has been trending down, down, down all year long, now the lowest since June of 2020. Some key details in that ISM index, new orders declined 5.9 points to 49.2, the lowest since May of 2020. Production barometer rose 0.7 points to 54.9, indicating that factories are still running at full tilt, so that's a positive indicator. But the employment gauge dropped 2.3 points to 47.3, that's the lowest in 22 months. More layoffs happening. And the price index as a measure of inflation slid 3.7 points to 78.5. It's fallen three months in a row after touching 87.1 in March. So there's a little bit more of that inflation is peaking narrative. We talked about deflation on Friday in my live stream. We're starting to see that in this ISM index. At least in the short term, it looks like inflation is coming down. Now, as I mentioned, we only have five more release dates between now and the actual GDP number that comes out on July 28th. And here's what they are. We have the International Trade Report on July 7th, Wholesale Trade and Employment Situation on the 8th, Retail Sales, Inventories, and Industrial Production on July 15th, Housing starts on July 19th, and then the final estimate the day before the actual GDP reading. Now, just a reminder, five more data points, and this thing has moved an awful lot in the last two data releases, so there's still time for this to go back into positive territory. However, I just want to reemphasize that, historically speaking, this indicator, this model, has been very accurate, especially as you get closer to the actual GDP number. So as time goes on, this number is going to get more and more reliable, and right now, we are at the lowest point we've been this entire quarter and still heading lower. So again, all indicators are that we are already in a recession. And remember, by the time a recession is declared, you've already been in it for six months. That would have started on January. Remember that peak in the stock market on January 5th. So we are gonna stay on top of this indicator and give you updates as they come in over the next couple of weeks until that all important July 28th GDP indicator. Until next time, live small and dream big.